Uh, so today um, we are just going to apply a topic I discussed yesterday. Uh, so yesterday uh, we discussed several asset allocation methodologies, and then one of these methodologies was the Bayesian uh, asset allocation methodology. And uh, now I'm just going to uh, show you an application. It's uh, a little bit different, the contest, because it's not exactly in the investment area. It's related to the energy planning. and. Uh, there is nothing new here. Actually, what is new is the application in an area uh, for the first time at the interior of energy planning. Okay? So it's a joint work with uh, Julie Stern and uh, Osvaldo Costa and Selma from uh, the Polytechnic School of University of Sao Paulo. And so let's go. So uh, what we are going to discuss uh, is a brief introduction uh, concerning the problems involved with the contest. Then uh, the classical approach, not classical and the meaning that is opposite to the Bayesian approach, but uh, the classical one in terms of the asset allocation methodologies. Uh, so basically the papers you are going to find in the literature uh, use mean variance approach. So I'm just going to describe that. Then the Bayesian approach. Then since uh, the, now the, the, the idea was just to introduce the idea in the context of energy planning, I'm going to show, uh, to show two very simple applications. The first one using an improper prior case and the second a proper prior case just to show the flexibility of the methodology and uh, to show to the policy uh, makers, to the energy policy makers, the possibility of using this kind of tool in their decision making process. Then, uh, finally, to show some results and uh, some final remarks. So, um, obviously, uh, the need for energy and electricity is, is very high. And uh, uh, there are many different sources of energy. And uh, as I mentioned, the idea is to uh, plan what I'm going to do in the next years. So, since you have... Um, several different uh, sources such as wind, gas, coal, etc. And each energy uh, technology has a different cost. And in addition, it's also important to mention that uh, if you consider an existing one, if you already have an infrastructure there, there is the cost is something. And then if you are planning to build a different plant, the, the cost is totally different. So something we are also considering inside of the, the model here. So just a figure illustrating different sources of energy. <clears throat> so we have here from coal, nuclear, and oil, etc., to uh, solar, wind, biomass, okay? Uh, so the worldwide uh, demand for energy is always increasing and uh, for both countries and companies, it's important the long-term planning. And that's the reason that there are some uh, papers uh, trying to use uh, like a mean variance approach to uh, make such allocation. And uh, it is another problem is to have a diversified allocation, and the mean variance uh, helps with that. Uh, well, the the achievement of an optimal design and electricity generation infrastructure, so bends toward a more balanced portfolio. So uh, the Markowitz framework helps with that. And it's also, again, uh, something I already mentioned, but it's important to distinguish between the already existing uh, infrastructure to the new one you would like to, you plan to, to implement. I think the battery is over. It's not working. <laughs> if you want, you can change the slides for me. Uh, actually, the pointer is the pointer is working, but uh, oh, the button is not. Oh. Uh, Thank you. Uh, here, uh, um, just to, to show you the 
an example of planning process, what you need to worry about when we're talking about energy planning. So, of course, we are not going to address all the points there, but uh, uh, the methodology of uh, uh, combining things, considering costs and uncertainty of the costs helps. <clears throat> so, um, we have historical values uh, with uh, uh, costs and uh, for some kind of uh, um, electricity generation um, technologies, we also have projections for some time horizons, so it's possible to use that inside of the model. In particular, we are going to use here uh, a data set used by several other uh, papers. Um, even uh, having uh, the projections, future projections and the historical data, uh, we have uh, uncertainty uh, to consider. So here, just to mention an example, so for future control on CO2 emission, of course, uh, the corresponding mechanisms, related mechanisms, uh, you have an uncertainty of what's going to happen with electricity generation, generation costs. <clears throat> so, of course, if you are an specialist in energy, and I'm not, but uh, if you are, you can maybe include some beliefs about that in the model. So, that's the reason I'm introducing a Bayesian approach here. Um, oops. So, here is just to uh, make some uh, comments about the related costs. So, of course, you have the cost to build something, initial costs, some uh, approaches have high costs, and uh, you also have other kind of costs that you need also to address, to include there in your problem. Um, and uh, during the operation, sometimes uh, the operation is inexpensive, but other times it's not, so it's something you also need to include there. <clears throat> so, considering the cost as random variables, and that's something different from uh, the investment contest, because there um, we consider returns. So, here are costs. And uh, it, so, in the literature, there are uh, the four papers uh, listed here uh, using mean variance approach to deal with the problem. Basically, it's the Markovitz mean variance. And here, a comment uh, on Markovitz's approach. So, Markovitz developed the methodology in 1952. It's a, um, it's a long time. As, and uh, it's a, a basic, it's very fundamental to the modern portfolio theory. Um, the set of uh, solutions is called efficient frontier as, as uh, um, as it was possible to see yesterday when I ran uh, the frontier. And, and here the problem is just to, when interpreting the results, uh, to remember that it's not return, it's cost, so some, sometimes something changes. So I'm going just to point the differences. Uh, so expected costs and the uh, covariance matrix of uh, electricity generation are considered known if you just apply a mean variance Markovitz, and that's not true. Um, <clears throat> as something that is important, for example, black Litterman in 1991 uh, pointed that small changes in the expected uh, returns can produce large uh, difference in the allocations. So yesterday, when I changed the uh, point and the uh, efficient frontier there, it was possible to notice that the location changes a lot, so that's not good. Um, and in addition to that, uh, you also will find many uh, robust uh, mean variance uh, approaches in the literature, as I mentioned yesterday, and uh, in the context of energy planning, you, you are going to find the work from Costa at all, and uh, Julio is co-author. Uh, he is proposing the idea of using the robust portfolio optimization and the energy planning contest. <clears throat> um, so, in the energy planning process, it's usual to have uh, particip uh, specialists participating in the process, and they have uh, very specific beliefs about what's going on with. Uh, the costs, associated costs. And 
So the idea of the Bayesian approach here is just to be able to insert that beliefs and the problem. Um, <clears throat> Uh, here is just uh, a review of the literature. So we have um, here all the approaches are in the mean variance contest. And uh, I'm calling naive mean variance optimization is using the raw Markovitz mean variance. So these ones. And then we have a very recent work from Costa et al. as using robust mean variance optimization. And now I'm proposing the idea of using Bayesian mean variance optimization just to make the uh, framework more flexible. <clears throat> so the objective is the introduction of the Bayesian asset allocation to electricity generation planning. Um, first, I'm going just to present uh, the classical uh, mean variance uh, just to set the notation to be able to, after to compare some results with uh, previous papers, and then present the Bayesian approach with the, the correct notation, and then show some results. <clears throat> so um, again, uh, uh, so classical mean variance approach. And so in this approach, we are, we are going to consider uh, the mean and the variance as uh, known as are known parameters. Uh, so, the, of course, the rational planner will prefer a portfolio with a lower expected cost for a given level of risk. And uh, a preferred portfolio is one that minimizes risk for a given expected uh, uh, cost, level of cost. So, the set of portfolios that are optimal is the efficient frontier, and no rational planner would select a portfolio uh, lying above the efficient frontier. It's above because it's cost and not return. <clears throat> so the notation to uh, to show the to just to be able to write the mean variance uh, uh, problem. Uh, so here we have two vectors: one containing the costs uh, of the expected costs of the existing energies. Uh, sorry, it's the random vector containing the uh, energies, the costs of the technologies of the expected. Uh, ex existent ones, sorry, and here the another vector with uh, the prospective ones, the ones we would like to implement and you, you don't have. <clears throat> um, just to use the same approach from the previous papers, um, I'm just considering normal distributions for both vectors there. And uh, also considering n uh, different technologies. <clears throat> uh, doing that, uh, it's important to say that the mean of the costs for the existent ones and the prospective technologies are different. Uh, also, the risk is different. So you have sigma E and sigma P. And uh, the correlation, and there is a typo here, is not E, is P, is equal to 1. And there is also... Uh, uh, it's possible to write uh, a relation between these things. <clears throat> Here, just uh, to write the covariance matrix for the existing energy, and then for the prospective ones. So just to put everything together, you have the normal distribution here and the covariance matrix here. <clears throat> uh, we have to set some constraints. So. I cannot leverage, so the weights must sum equal to one, and it's not possible to short because uh, it's allocation in terms of infrastructure. So here is the weights are between zero and one. Uh, the cost of the portfolio is just multiplying the weights by the random vector of cost and the expected value and the variance. <clears throat> uh, that the slides here are just uh, repeating something we saw up yesterday. Uh, so here it's just minimizing the variance for a certain level of uh, uh, cost. And then you have uh, equivalent problems here when you minimize cost. Yesterday it was to maximize expected returns. And uh, you also possible to you can also uh, uh, combine 
the cost and the, the variance, the risk here, and uh, solve the problem. Okay. And now, just to introduce the Bayesian asset allocation in this specific contest. Um, here the posterior, uh, the likelihood and the prior, and the expression for the likelihood according to our assumptions here. Everything very simple. The problem is to find some appropriate priors. So since I'm not a specialist in energy uh, technologies, we are using some standard things here just to illustrate the, the framework. So first is the improper prior case. Uh, this case, I don't know anything. I don't have beliefs to include. Uh, what I would like to include maybe in this case is to say that uh, I have uncertainty concerning, for example, uh, the parameters there. So here I'm using Jeffrey's prior. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm going to present the two cases first and then the results at the end. So just to present the um, <clears throat> the distribution of the, the costs here. So it's a multivariate student T distribution. And the expressions are here. So of course, if you increase the T, um, you are going to decrease here the, actually the covariance of the posterior will go to the covariance of the sample. And if you also increase the number of technologies and um, keep everything fixed, it, uh, it uh, also increases the uncertainty there. And the proper prior case is also a standard one. We also applied yesterday. Um, and here, uh, the mu is considered normal, and the sigma, the covariance matrix, is, is inverse with short. And here, the the posterior here uh, and expressions for that. So, <clears throat> uh, some results. So, I'm using the same data from um, Lozica, here, and it's the same data used by uh, Costa. <clears throat> and the technologies considered are here. Sorry, here because uh, I'm just um, was using. The name is here as labels inside of my program, so I just uh, put the name is here and the uh, hydro is with I, okay, here, sorry. And uh, the data is here, so we have the, the means and uh, the standard deviations, vectors, and the correlation, correlation matrix here. So just uh, putting everything there into optimization problem and solving for several uh, risk levels, <coughs> you have uh, the standard mean variance, the naive mean variance frontier. It's the same graph, okay? And um, if you increase T, it's, that's obvious, uh, the uncertainty increases and the frontier goes to the right. And uh, if in the Bayesian, uh, if, sorry, in the proper case, if you change tau, you also change a lot the frontier. <coughs> So the improper prior case, the efficient frontier changes depending on the value of t, okay? And the protective covariance of the improper case is the sample covariance scale up by a factor uh, that approaches to one when t uh, increases. So t, uh, uh, that's the same in the investment area, is not only a proxy to the size of the sample using the estimation, but also the degree of confidence you have, uh, the planner has on the estimation of the parameters based on the historical data. And uh, decreasing uh, the value of t shifts to the right, the efficient frontier, and of course the approach, uh, the robust approach used by, by Costa, uh, causes the same uh, effect. So, just to, uh, to finish, uh, so the paper introduced for the first time the Bayesian mean variance optimization in the energy planning contest. The idea uh, in the next steps is to uh, use real expectations from specialists, future expectations of the specialists, and to make a more deep study and subject. So thank you.